Welcome to the finish line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura and last week I pieced together this table topper which is this nice star and I do want to get it quilted now that it's still out and hasn't been put away. So I'm going to do a chain pattern. So I'll share with you today some of the things that I like to avoid when I'm doing a chain pattern and some things that I like to do. And this can be done on a domestic machine, on a walking foot, or you can have it free motion on your domestic or on a sit down machine. A chain pattern has this loop going from point to point. To sew it continuously, we're going to start at one point. We hit the other point, but instead of coming around this way, we're going to come down and make an S. So we're going to do this S shape. Then when we come back, we will fill in that other piece. We can do those chains following each one of these rows. So we're going to have chains going in one direction and chains coming into the other. And depending on how big the chains are, they will overlap each other. Now we can draw these chains out with a template. And sometimes you can buy a template that you're going to be able to trace or you can make yourself a cardboard template and draw those lines, put it on a regular machine with a walking foot and just follow those chain shapes, making that letter S so that S is going to go and come back. However, when I do my chain pieces, the one thing that I really want to avoid are the intersections. And there's two reasons why I want to try to avoid hitting the intersections. If I miss a few here and there, they are more noticeable because the eye knows to look for the points to stop and start right here. The other thing I don't like about hitting these center points is the fabric is thicker. So we need to slow down to hit this corner in order to turn around and some points can be very thick so we need to go very slow so that needle has time to penetrate that thick fabric. So in order to avoid that I don't hit my intersections. My chains are going to go from center point to center point. Same thing I'm going to start one edge I'm going to make that loop continue that loop, continue the loop again, but I'm hitting the insides. There's no bulk here. There's no points. And if I'm off a little bit, you're not going to notice it. And if I can, I will find some shape to make those loops. It can be a circle and that circle will need to hit those center marks. So this size of course, it's the same as this size, so we can find a shape, but instead of going from point to point, we move it so it's coming into the center. So I'm going to be able to stitch, stop, move the loop, and continue down. So circles will work great with this because you can often get a whole pack of circles of various sizes. So we might be able to find one that's going to fit. Doing ruler work, of course, we do need that special thick foot. So I'll take it off the machine and test it. I will test it from point to point. It's just easier to see. So I'm going to put that at one point, just move that along and make sure I'm going to hit that next point. And then I'll move it and test it. So I'll just test it right here on top of the quilt with no marking at all, just using the foot as a guide. If I know this circle works from point to point, then I know it's going to fit in between. There are lots of other rulers that you can use. There's some with big curves and gradual curves, other little curves. And depending on the size, you might be able to get a scalloped ruler. You can also get oval rulers. And the rulers do come in a stack. So I have five different rulers here. So 
So you can always use the outside or the inside. So we can draw it or find these plastic rulers or these plastic templates. And I did find the plastic template to do the ruler work with from Quilter's Rule. And it is called the Pointed Leaf Oval. And it has a couple of different shapes. So it's considered a pointed leaf oval because it does have the four sides with a different shape oval. We do have lines that are engraved in the back of the ruler for registration marks. And because of the four different sizes, there's a lot of uses from this one ruler. I did take the ruler and I put a little mark in the center because I want to use that as a registration mark. So I put a piece of tape down, I drew a straight line, and then I put another piece of tape over top of that marker. And it's along that back. So that mark is in between two pieces of tape, so it won't rub off. Like most rulers, this did have a plastic covering on the back that we're going to be able to remove. So this one side is going to fit perfectly. So I'm going to be using this ruler for those curves. But you can use any ruler or draw the lines to get started with. I will be sandwiching my quilt together with this fusible batting. But even though I fuse it, I do like to put in a couple of pins. And I have been asked about these pins that I use. They're just straight regular safety pins and they have these covers on them. So it just makes them easy to use. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out these little covers. If we're stitching from intersection to intersection, we would stitch along here and move the ruler. But I do not want to hit these marks. I want to hit the centers. So the center line that I drew on the ruler will come up. And now that curve is going to come in between so that center point is in the middle. So we never have to worry about hitting that mark. It's going to be in the center. This particular pattern, we're going to have to start off of the quilt so that we can start with that border. Because I'm having this curve in the center, I will need to draw a line continuing right up to the top and I need a little bit of a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm having that little oval go here so I need to continue that oval. So we're going to be able to move that ruler right up. There's a registration mark right here. That halfway mark that I drew is going to be sitting at that quarter inch mark. Now I can start stitching off of the quilt and come on. I'm going to stop here and then I rotate this template and continue to stitch down. So let me show you on the machine. So I have the registration mark on the seam and I'm a quarter inch from that border. Hold your template down and stitch until you come to that line. And stop. Now I can just rotate this, line up that registration mark, and if our halfway mark is not halfway, well, we're going to be able to just bring that stitching down a little bit until we get there. By not stopping and starting at this point, it's very forgiving. Now I'm going to continue that curve, stopping at that seam. And I do have my lines lined up. We're going to rotate this. So what we're making is a big letter S. And once again, if that doesn't line up, just give yourself a couple of stitches until everything lines up and then do that curve. So we have that curve 
and nothing has hit that mark. We're going to continue to do this ruler on one side, flip it, flip it, and we're going to follow that seam all the way down to the very bottom. So we've done that last curve. The next one will come this way, but I will need to extend that seam. If we had a block here like this one, we wouldn't need to draw the line. And this is just going to keep things straight. We were here, now we're going to turn this, line up that registration mark, line up our halfway mark, and finish that curve. And one more twist to come off the quilt. I will line it up here, and you can see I have approximately a quarter inch right there. Now instead of stopping right here at the end, we're going to stitch right to this point. And we're going to be able to use that point to pivot and go back. So we're not going to stop, we're going to turn around and go all the way down. So we've had that stop, now I'm going to come up. I'm lining up the top. This is already here. And now I can stitch right back to my center point. This will be trimmed off, but this saves us a lot of time lining up that ruler. Now if we want, you can turn this, so if you want to have the quilt going away from you, you can. The back curve is coming this way, so I need to have it going in the opposite direction. Line up our registration mark, our center mark, and stitch. Flip that ruler so we can continue that chain. And stitch. So that was the first row of stitching. And now we're going back to continue that chain. So I'm going to stitch all the way back up to the top. And it won't matter if you're stitching in this direction or one way or the other. What is most comfortable for you is really the way to do it. So we're going to do all of the seams going in this direction. And then we're going to turn it around and do all of the seams going in this direction. And we're not going to do anything with these half square triangles. We're just following the straight lines. When the chains are done on those two rows, you can really see where they're joining up together. We've taken those chains right off, stopped, and come right back on. So we've done all of the chains going in the one direction. We're going to need to do the chains going in the opposite direction. We've started the same way, have gone all the way down, and have come right back up. And now we can really see this pattern forming. These little intersections have been framed, but we haven't hit them. And depending on the size of the curve, regardless if we draw it or we use a ruler, it will change this little shape here. We will still have those four points around that square, but the curves can be different. Let's take a close look at some ways that we can fudge some of these seams. So there's going to be times where the ruler is not going to line up with the quilt. So we want to fudge the ruler a little bit. This area has already been quilted, so we're not really going to worry about lining this area up of the ruler. What we want to do is focus on the center line to match the center and this registration line. So if we look closely, I have about three stitches that I need to come down in order to move this ruler down. So I'm just going to continue stitching that arch 
about three stitches and then move that ruler down. Now I'm able to line it up right there and this area will now line up. And I can continue to stitch that arch. If we're still off, we can always do one more stitch until it comes over. We can also just take the fabric and just make sure it's flat. It might be just bunched up a little bit. So as long as it's flat, we can take those little extra stitches, matching up those two registrations, and finish quilting that arc. I'm going to show you a few areas where the seams did not match exactly, and you'll notice that it really doesn't make much of a difference. It would be very noticeable in these intersections, but in these areas, it's not so bad. So we can see that that really did not X the area, but it's not that noticeable. And if we follow that line, we can see here that the X did not even make that line. But at a quick glance, you really don't even notice it. Here's another one where we have about two stitches in between this area. We don't notice it here, but we definitely would have noticed it there. So just by stitching a couple of stitches to get these two registration lines to match up will make a big difference as we're going down. If we don't line up the one, the next one will be bigger and the next one will be bigger. So it's better just to fudge it a little bit here, line these up and continue down. To finish off this border, we need to do half a chain. So instead of making this curve, we will be just going into this formation because we're only needing half of that. Our halfway mark will go in between those squares or on the lines we drew. We do need to leave a quarter inch right along this edge and then just stitch over. We're going to just lift up that ruler and move it sideways. And over. So I will be just doing these loops and that's going to finish off that chain. If you have too much of a space, you can always do a line going right down the centers. But as a general rule, if the space is less than your fist, you should be okay. So let me finish quilting this and I'll show it to you when I'm done. So here's a close up of the chains on the back of the quilt. And because I used a nice white thread, you can barely see it on the front. But by avoiding these intersections, it definitely saved a lot of stress and I was able to fudge whenever I needed. The chain pattern has those soft curves, but still has the points, so it helps duplicate the points in the quilt. To do the chains on this quilt, I was able to find a ruler that did those four inch squares, but you can just use circles or make your own template. Just trace them out, put them on a regular machine, put the walking foot on and just chain away. And we can make those chains fat, small, skinny, long. You can put chains inside of chains. And if you do a single chain and go around in a circle, it ends up being a flower. It is a very old pattern, but can look new and modern at the same time. I'll put a link in the description to the ruler that I used. And there's also a PDF on all the different things that you can do with this ruler. I do hope that takes a mystery out of making chains. And thank you for joining me today on the finish line. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're getting done next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.